When embarking on a digital transformation, one of the biggest decisions that an organization needs to make is what kind of technology are they going to deploy? Are they going to deploy a SaaS cloud solution or a private cloud solution? But what's the difference between the two and what are the pros and cons? That's what I'm going to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And one of the biggest decision points when defining a digital strategy is what type of technology are we going to deploy? Most software vendors, if not all, are migrating towards the cloud. So the general question isn't whether or not we're moving to the cloud, but what kind of cloud solution makes the most sense for our organization? And within the cloud category, you have two main options to choose from. You have SaaS or software as a service, and you have private cloud solutions. So what exactly is the difference between the two and how do you decide what the best option is for your organization? And finally, what are the pros and cons of each? That's what I wanna talk about here today. If you're looking for more information about some of the leading cloud ERP systems in the market, I encourage you to download our 2024 Digital Transformation Report. It's a report we publish each year that contains a number of best practices for digital transformations, as well as independent rankings of different ERP systems in the marketplace. You can read that digital transformation report by scanning the QR code in front of you, or you can go to the links in the description field below. First, it helps to understand the difference between SaaS or software as a service and private cloud options. If we back up even more, it helps to look at enterprise technology in general. You have two categories of ERP systems. You have the traditional on-premise systems, which was how ERP systems were first built which essentially states that they're deployed on premise, meaning you have a server. You would see a server room behind me with the software physically installed on those servers. But in the case of cloud types of systems, it's the opposite of that. You're not seeing any servers behind me. You don't have the software installed within your four walls or within your organization. Instead, someone else is hosting that software for you. So that's the cloud versus the on-premise comparison. But within cloud, you have two types of cloud solutions or subcategories. You have private cloud, which essentially states that you would have a instance or a unique instance of your software that is hosted by someone else in the cloud. But then there's also a multi-tenant SaaS option. And SaaS stands for software as a service, meaning that multiple organizations use that same instance of the software. Now they can still personalize it, they can still protect their own data, have their own individual logins, but multi-tenant and software as a service is really a way to host technology for multiple organizations using the same software. So within the world of cloud, you have these two options. You have SaaS and you have private cloud. So the question becomes, which is best for us as an organization? And before I dive into the pros and cons of each, it's also worth noting that most organizations that sell software are moving towards a SaaS or a multi-tenant model. The reason being it's more profitable for them. They can scale their organizations faster but a lot of them are still providing private cloud options, especially for larger, more complex customers. Now, in order to make a decision between SaaS and private cloud options, it helps to understand the advantages and disadvantages of each. And many software vendors may try to convince you that there are no disadvantages to one or either of these models, but I'm here to tell you that there are, and I wanna dive into what they are. Let's start with the private cloud. Now, private cloud is oftentimes considered as sort of a hybrid between on-premise and multi-tenant cloud solutions or the software as a service options. The reason private cloud is considered somewhat of a hybrid is because you still have your own instance of the software. It's a lot like on-premise software. The only difference is someone else is hosting it for you. However, you still have a lot of the same advantages of on-premise software, which is you can customize it, you can change it. You can break it if you want, you can integrate it to other systems, you can basically do whatever you want with the technology. So you have a lot more flexibility with private cloud options. Now the disadvantage is that just because you can customize a software or do whatever you want with it doesn't mean that you should. And a lot of organizations get in trouble because they over customize or they end up breaking the software trying to get it to do something that it wasn't built to do. But it may be because of the complexity or the unique nature of your business, private cloud makes the most sense because that flexibility is more important to your organization. Now let's shift gears and talk about software as a service or multi-tenant cloud software. And again, multi-tenant or software as a service means that it's software that's hosted offsite by someone else, but it also means that multiple organizations are using the same version of that software. 
So in other words, you can't customize it the way you could with the private cloud. Now, this could be a good thing for organizations that don't want to customize or if they have pretty basic vanilla business processes and needs, or if they're willing to make big changes to their business processes to fit the software as a service model, but it does limit your flexibility. There simply is less flexibility with software as a service when you compare it to the private cloud model. The other advantage of SaaS cloud solutions is that most software vendors are moving towards a SaaS model, or at least they're trying to. Longer term, I think more software vendors are gonna be offering SaaS as sort of their flagship product, not because it's necessarily better for the market, but because it earns them more money. It's more profitable, it's more scalable for a software company to build a SaaS offering. The other advantage of SaaS is that you get a lot of R&D dollars that are going into the software on a daily and weekly and monthly basis. Even though you may not have the flexibility you want, you are getting sort of the bleeding edge of new advancements and in innovation and technology. Whereas with a private cloud, you have to wait for some of those updates and upgrades. And in some cases, you're not getting those upgrades because you've customized the software and you're not able to get onto the newest version of the software. So those are some of the advantages and disadvantages of both models. But now the question becomes, how do we know which is the right option for us? And that's what I'm gonna talk about next. So let's talk about where software as a service makes the most sense for you. First of all, it helps to understand that there are certain systems out in the marketplace that were built as SaaS solutions from the very start. In those cases, these ERP systems are a lot more advanced and mature than some of the legacy systems that were originally on-prem and now are moving towards software as a service. So for example, you have products like Oracle's NetSuite, Salesforce, and Workday. Those are three popular ERP systems that were built in the cloud, they were built as SaaS solutions, and they're very mature. So if you want a mature solution, those might be some of the best options for you. But regardless, even if you're not considering one of those three systems, or if you want to look at a different type of SaaS solution, some of the reasons why they might be the best fit for your organization would be because you really are interested in standardizing your business processes and sort of forcing that standardization within your organization. That's one reason. Because SaaS systems are less flexible than private cloud solutions, by definition, you're driving a certain amount of standardization and commonality among business processes, for better or for worse. Another reason why a SaaS model might be a good fit for your organization is if you're trying to be an innovative organization that's on the leading edge of new technologies and innovation. So all the R&D dollars that software vendors are investing in their product can get deployed to you faster in a SaaS model, generally speaking. Now, where SaaS may not be a good fit is in cases where you are an organization that by design has different types of business processes and requires a certain amount of flexibility in your operations. If you're a big multinational organization, for example, you work in different markets, you sell your products in different markets, you have different processes, different customer bases, a diversified product line, that's gonna require a certain amount of flexibility that will likely strain the limitations of a software as a service or SaaS system. So you really have to look at who you are as a business and what it is you're trying to accomplish and what your priorities are but those are some of the reasons you may or may not choose a SaaS system for your digital strategy. Now I've talked about why SaaS might be the best fit for your organization, but now let's talk about why private cloud systems might be the best fit for your organization. Now, as I mentioned before, private cloud is a nice hybrid between the old on-premise model and the newer cloud systems and that you get your own instance of the software and you can change the software because it's not multi-tenant. It's not being shared by multiple organizations. It's an instance that only you and your organization use, and therefore you have more flexibility. You can generally do more customization to the system. You can generally integrate it a little bit easier with other third-party technologies, and it can give you that sort of flexibility if those are your priorities. Now, as I mentioned before, that flexibility comes with the dark side. Just because you can customize the software doesn't mean you should in all cases. In some cases, it may be that you need to change the software to fit your business needs, but oftentimes the ability to customize manifests itself and is covered by a resistance to change. So in other words, organizations resist change when they know that they can change the software to do things the way they've always done them, whereas the SaaS model is standardized enough that it sort of forces a certain amount of standardization within your business, whether you like it or not. So for those reasons, you really have to look at how important flexibility is and if you are going to deploy a private cloud model, there's two big risks you need to manage. One is the propensity to over-customize, which a lot of organizations do. And the way to mitigate that risk is to make sure that you have project governance 
and guardrails in place to ensure that you manage the risk of customization and that you're not over-customizing. And then secondly, as I mentioned before, a lot of the software vendors are really pushing towards a SaaS multi-tenant model, meaning that private cloud might be obsolete in the longer term. I don't see that happening in the near future, but if you're only looking to do a digital transformation once every few decades, you may be at the end of that cycle and find that the private cloud solution is obsolete and you may be forced into a SaaS model at some point in the intermediate future. So those are two risks to be aware of, but in general, private cloud we find is a great fit for a lot of organizations, especially the larger and more complex organizations we work with. So I hope this has given you some guidance and some things to think about as you define your digital strategy and define what path you wanna go down in terms of private cloud versus software as a service. For more information about best practices around ERP implementations and technology implementations in general, as well as a independent and technology agnostic ranking of different ERP systems in the marketplace, I encourage you to read our 2024 Digital Transformation Report. It's a report we publish each year that contains a number of best practices and software comparisons and reviews that are meant to help you through your digital transformation. You can read that report by scanning the QR code in front of you, or you can use the links below. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. Historic way of, <laughs> no, wow. On Next, I'm gonna jump into what it takes to choose, I cannot talk <laughs> to save my life Next. today. Private cloud is, I feel like I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> constantly on the leading edge of new technology. There's two big risks you need to manage. If I could just remember what they were.